Uh, a fish assumption. So, so many people are afraid of sufficient and necessary assumption questions. Does anybody right now, when you see them, kind of like, oh, I hate? Does anybody not like these or like these or, or have preconceived thoughts? G and Julian, you're like, no, never. Does I kind of like them. You li oh, you okay? Good. Why do you like them, Emily? Um, just because I feel like there's like a certain strategy to them. No, I agree. Simple. So I, it doesn't get like too confusing. I actually agree with that. If you if your brain can process the strategy, mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. I think part of it is really discerning between the two different ones as well. Because if you try to, if you don't, if you're not good at recognizing what is sufficient and what is a necessary question, how you approach them is very different. And it and for people that don't see it at first, it can be extremely frustrating because all the answer choices look the same. Does anybody feel that, like Jillian, do you feel that insufficient assumption? You're like, they all look the same and I have no idea how to determine between them. You're not alone. So one of the reasons it's so important to differentiate between the two is necessary assumption is a top-down question and sufficient assumption is a bottom-up. And so one of them, we're looking for more mild answer choices and the other, we want the strongest answer possible. So clearly like that could guide us a different direction if we, if we can't find, um, what we're looking for. And oftentimes in these question types, they will have an unnecessary assumption. One of the answer choices will be a sufficient assumption and vice versa. So there's trick trap answers there too. So what is the difference between sufficient and necessary? So what is an assumption? Do you know, Emily? Like what does assumption even mean? Mm. No, I don't have like a good definition okay. of it. Does anybody have a good definition? Okay, I have a good definition. It's an unsaid premise or an unstated premise. So it's something that we're assuming to be true without saying it. Um, and so what then would be a sufficient assumption, Sabrina? Like what does sufficient mean? Sufficient means enough. So it's almost like something that we can assume would be enough to cause that. Yeah. So an, a sufficient assumption is something that's unsaid that we're assuming that would guarantee our conclusion. Excellent. And then, um, Anna, what does necessary mean? Um, it needs to happen. Yeah. Necessary starts with any, so it's needed. So this is like something that we're not saying, but needs to be true for our conclusion to even have a chance. So assumptions are different from conditional statements, but the logic is similar. So whenever we have conditional statements, we have those if then statements. So if our sufficient condition, we have to have our necessary condition where assumptions are just like an unsaid thing that follows a similar meaning. So if we had our argument here and we have a conclusion and we're looking for the sufficient assumption our argument's going to be flawed for some reason, and we need to find an answer choice of what's unsaid that needs to be true in order to guarantee this conclusion. So these are like super strengthened questions. And so do we want, on strengthened questions, Anna, do we want strong or mild answers? Strong. Strong. So what do you think about sufficient? Mild. If, we're, if it's a bottom up for sufficient. Oh, oh, then um, uh, strong. Strong, excellent. We, I haven't said it yet, so you're totally fine. But how I remember it is sufficient, strength, and stronger. All starts with S, sufficient, strength, and stronger. And so sufficient, bringing in new information. And so on our strength and questions, we have our, we have our conclusion. And you know how like we were just trying to bring in new information that gets us closer to that rock? Well, on sufficient assumption questions, we wanna bring in something so strong that it guarantees it. Does that make sense? So if I said it's hot outside, therefore we should get ice cream. What would be a sufficient assumption there? So what's our premise? Jillian? It's hot outside, therefore we hot should get ice cream. It's hot outside, yes. And what's our conclusion, Jillian? We need to get ice cream. 
we should get ice cream. Is that a valid conclusion? No, why not? What do you know? Why not, Jillian? Oh, you're asking me? Oh, you're, uh, you're on a roll right now. We're going to keep, like, <laughs> what is this called Socratic method? What do they call it when, like, you attack one student and you just call it, like, you're on blast or whatever? <laughs> um, Because it doesn't, wait, I'm sorry, what was the question? What does, why isn't this a valid conclusion? Because it's just, it's just not, it's never, it's never. Okay, why is it, yeah. it, Emily? Would it be just because it's hot outside? Like, just because it's hot outside, it doesn't guarantee that you get yeah. ice cream? Why does getting hot outside have anything to do with getting ice cream? They're not related. But what would be our sufficient assumption here that would guarantee that we should get ice cream? So go ahead and put this in the chat. What would be a sufficient assumption here? All right, so a lot of us are saying things that aren't strong enough. I think almost everyone. Okay, except, okay. So someone said everyone likes ice cream. Every, someone said ice cream can cool you down on a hot day. And then someone said when it's hot outside, many people get ice cream. All of those would strengthen it. But do they guarantee that we are for sure getting ice cream? We have to connect our premise to our conclusion. So why does get it being hot outside have anything to do with getting ice cream? What if we said, whenever it's hot outside, you must get ice cream? Do we see how that's stronger than what we said? And so you're super close on the idea, but that's how the, that is what's different between a strength and a sufficient is we almost have to go so far beyond what's strong. And just, even if it sounds silly to guarantee that. So I have a couple of practice here. Oh, just backing up a second when it comes to identifying between sufficient and necessary. The big, when it comes to identifying the question stem, sufficient assumption questions will have if in it. So like if assumed and sufficient has F in it. So that's how I remember it. So if assumed is sufficient, which is similar to a strengthen question, like if true would strengthen, um, <clears throat> we're necessary, which we'll talk about these on Saturday. So don't overly stress, but necessary has depends, requires, or relies. Those are the big words for it. A necessary assumption. All right. All right. So, what is? It's really hot out. Or it's. I'm sorry. It's a really hot day outside. All kids get ice cream when it's hot outside. Therefore, Tia gets ice cream. She's not even here for her lesson of the day. Therefore, Tia gets ice cream. What is our conclusion, Emily? Uh, therefore, or just Tia gets ice cream. Yeah, Tia gets ice cream. Is this valid though, Emily? Uh, no. No, why not? Um, because it doesn't like specify that she's a kid. Well, we, yeah, we don't know anything about Tia, right? Yeah. We have a new variable that we bring in, which is Tia, that we have nothing in one of our premise. So we have one premise that it's really hot outside. And then we have another premise that kids get ice cream when it's hot outside. But what does Tia have anything to do with those? Nothing. And so I want you all to think, what is our sufficient assumption that will guarantee, well, she kind of said it, that will guarantee this conclusion? Jillian, what do you got? Tia is a kid. Tia is a kid. Yeah. Do you see how we connect? Sorry, I know I'm breaking this down to the basic level, but I hopefully it's helping. Do you see how we took our conclusion and connected it to one of our premises to guarantee it. That's all we're doing on sufficient assumption. All right, I have one more for us to try. Go ahead and put your answer in the chat of what you think is the sufficient assumption.
Excellent. Everybody got it. Sabrina doesn't have wings. Couldn't there be a million other reasons why Sabrina is not able to fly? But that one is enough for her to not. Sorry, Sabrina, you don't have wings. You can't fly. Sad day. All right. So our goal for these sufficient assumption questions is to find the missing premise that if true would guarantee the conclusion to be rock solid. Where people get super tripped up on these is they don't make predictions and every single answer sounds the same. Do you, I, you're gonna see, we'll go over some where they sound this. So just like our strengthening questions, we wanna read our stimulus, find our conclusion, figure out what that gap is. Oftentimes the conclusion is bringing in a new variable that just comes out of left field and we're like, this has nothing to do with anything. And we wanna make some kind of prediction that will guarantee that conclusion. So as soon as we know that it's a sufficient assumption or we put like, we're like, hey, this conclusion is it, this is golden. I'm going to prove it. We're on team. We're, we're on team conclusion at that point, and we almost want to solve that puzzle of like, what could I say? All right. So with that, go ahead and read this one and find our conclusion. All right, Anna. What's our conclusion? We can conclude from this that Maria trained hard. Yes, and why do we think Maria trained hard, Sabrina? Because she won the local race and she beat the winner from past four years. Excellent. Is, is this valid, Emily? No. Why not? Because we can't assume that she trained hard just yeah. because maybe yeah. everybody like sucked in this race right like every nobody trained hard it was a bunch of losers competing like nobody trained hard it was just a drunken fest but what could be the sufficient assumption that would guarantee that maria trained hard go ahead and put your prediction in the chat Tricky, tricky. <laughs> All right, Emily, you have an amazing prediction. What was your prediction? Uh, in order to be the past winners who Maria had to train extra hard every week. Yes. Uh, so what I was thinking is like to, to beat the four time winner, someone would have to train hard because a lot of people said Maria trained harder than Sue. Why doesn't that work, Emily? Um, because you could say that Sue only trained like 10 minutes a day or something. Yeah, Sue was crap. What kind of flaw is this, Sabrina? Whenever we say like someone, someone does something more than another, so therefore they are that thing. Relative and absolute. Absolute versus relative. Just because Maria, for, for the people that said this, just because Maria trained harder than Sue, so relative to Sue, she trained harder, but does that mean Maria trained hard? No. Like I could be like, I'm more of a professional basketball player than you. Therefore I'm a professional basketball player. Like, no. All right. So I love that. So go ahead and look at these answers and put your answer in the chat.
All right. So Maria trained hard. Which of the following, which the conclusion follows logically if which of the following assume is assumed. So why is A wrong? Maybe we kind of just went over it, but um, it, just because Sue did not train as hard as Maria trained, like that isn't strong enough to say why, to conclude why, that Maria trained hard. Yeah, it's like we have no level, like, okay, Sue, did, like Maria trained, like this is training hard, this is Maria, this is Sue. We have no idea. All right, why is, this is the trickiest one, why is B wrong? I mean, I guess I said B was wrong because, I mean, even just because she trained hard, she would win the sailboat race. Like, we don't know if anyone else trained hard. Like, if that's not sufficient enough. If I mean, she trained hard, she would win. We know that she won, but we don't know how she got there. There, yeah. there could be, like, maybe whoever has the most money wins. She bought them all off. We don't know. But training hard would be enough. But it doesn't guarantee it. Excellent. All right, what about D? Why is D wrong? I just really know how to explain why D was wrong. It's kind of like B, but Sue. Um, if Sue trained hard, she would win. Okay, cool, Sue. But does that mean that Maria trained hard? That Does that have anything to do with Maria, Jillian? Mm -mm. No, it's like, cool. We do know something about, if, if this were true, what would we know if, if this were true what could we say about based on our conclusion or based on our argument what do we know about sue she didn't win which in turn then so she didn't train hard yes excellent because maria won great job all right and then why is e wrong i thought e was it was just kind of irrelevant <laughs> usually faster yeah what does being faster have to do with I'm like, yeah, there's a lot of people that are faster than me and don't work as hard as I do. And I'm like, I'm working really hard on this treadmill. Like, 